Hey folks, in this video, I'm gonna be updating my workstation PC. I had the thing in a Tower 900 with a Ryzen 7 2700X and an old X370 gigabyte motherboard, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a Vega 56 graphics card, full custom water cooling and EK monoblock. In the end, it just wasn't working out for me and the case was the biggest problem. The problem is that the IO is up at the top because it has that oriented motherboard with the IO facing upwards. As a content creator, I rarely game. I'm constantly plugging in peripherals and external hard drives and unplugging and plugging things back in, I ended up leaving the top cover off of the thing almost all the time. As such, it's time to go back to a more traditional case design, and I'm going with something a little bit smaller that allow me to move it around a little bit easier as I look for new office space. The case I chose for my new chassis is the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic XL. I looked around at various other case options on the market and a couple of them spoke to me, but nothing quite like the Lee and Lee did. I like a white case right now, don't know why that's my aesthetic at the moment. This Lee and Lee case is gonna allow the water cooling that I need to be able to fit in there because I wanna maintain the low temperatures and low sound that I already had with my workstation. And it'll allow me larger space for hard drives so I can add on for storage and backup purposes. Since I need this workstation back up and running, let's dive in and I'll talk about the specifications as we go and what I'm installing in this system. Now in here, I am gonna be running two EKSE 360 radiators that I was running in my Thermaltake Tower 900. So I'm gonna mount one in the top and one in the side panel, as well as putting three fans in the bottom for airflow through this case. I just removed the case hardware from the back of this thing. I might as well go ahead and throw this hard drive that's going to be in there, in there. I don't love there's no rubber on the mounting for these hard drives, but I guess the, the cage that they mount to they have to line up just right with the, the plug on the back, so not much they can do. Now all I need to do, slip that in there, make sure it seats into the plug, and just slide this little tab over to the right. I'm gonna remove these SSD mount points so I can put the radiator here. Now there is a CPU cutout in here, but the hard drive cages actually block it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mount the CPU and the water block on the motherboard. Now previously I was using a Gigabyte X370 motherboard with my Ryzen 2700X. And while it did work in that board, it did not allow for precision boost overdrive. On the X370 board, I averaged 3.8 to 3.9 gigahertz and the base clock of a 2700X is 3.7. So it's only gaining one or 200 megahertz under full load boosting. That was not enough for the workloads that I'm putting this thing through. I'm hoping the X570 will allow me to get a little bit more life out of this 2700X chip until the 3900X or the 3950X come down in price a little bit. I'm gonna be using some of the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut on here. I've been really happy with this as far as a thermal paste is concerned. I'm almost out of it actually, but it allowed me to get cooler temperatures on my HP Omen laptop and actually get that thing to run faster as a result. Now the CPU water block I chose to use is this Bisky CPU-Ryzen-X-MK CPU water block. That is a mouthful, but the reason that I chose it primarily was price. The thing is cheaper than most of the other blocks on the, on the market that I was looking at, and I like the look of it too. It fits the aesthetic of my build pretty well. A secondary reason I chose it is this block is actually meant to be able to be used with AM4 or TR4. So if I wanna to go to a Threadripper processor later, I have the option of doing that while maintaining with this water block. Now I gotta peel this off the water block. That's a nice looking finish on there. Time to tighten corner by corner. I'm gonna start over here since this is the last one that I put in. For storage, I'm reinstalling these two Samsung SSDs that I have and a Samsung NVMe SSD that I use my workflow drive for all my actual footage that I'm editing. Installing the M.2 drive into the actual motherboard was a bit of a challenge here because this Bisky water block has, takes up all of the exclusionary zone of the CPU. And the RGB connector comes out right over top of that M.2, which means that it actually comes outside of the exclusionary zone, really. Now it's time to get the motherboard mounted up in the case so we can continue to mount all of the other hardware and get ready for plumbing the cooling system. Now with the top radiator mounted up, it's time to start mounting up the side radiator. I need to put it up high enough to get away from the fans that are gonna be in the bottom of the case, but then I don't wanna interfere with the top radiator and the reservoir mounting. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Moving on, now it's time to figure out mounting the reservoir to this 
radiator on here. Getting this reservoir and pump combo mounted in here was a complete nightmare. It doesn't help that it's a 250 millimeter, so I can barely fit a, I can't even fit a finger between this radiator on top and the top of the reservoir, but I got it in here. I had to make this weird little angle bracket and use one of the mounts because the, the mounts for this Alpha Cool res are just terrible. They're just awful. I don't think I'd ever recommend any Alpha Cool products. After I've had four pump failures and the way this reservoir is designed, I just, I would steer clear of their products entirely, personally. It's time to get the GPU into this thing, then I can start plumbing it. I'm reusing my Vega 56 graphics card with the Barrow water block that's on it. Now it's time to start planning the plumbing on this, and I've only got so many fittings. I didn't order things specifically for this. I'm just using whatever I had, so hopefully this doesn't end up a mess. So I'm cable managed and I'm plumbed. Cable management actually went pretty darn smooth on this build. I ended up putting my boot SSD and my cache SSD into some of these cages because I really like these setups here. They only have two SATA connections, one for each of these little cage setups. And then you have individual SATA cables for each of them going to the motherboard. I don't know if you can see this here, but this panel doesn't want to doesn't want to stay in place until I screw it in place. That's not because of the cable management behind it. I thought I did a decent job of that. It's actually because my power supply is hitting right down here at the bottom. I don't know if I could loosen the power supply and move it a little bit, but I don't really see a need to. Once I put some screws in here, this should be fine. I just want to see how this looks. Bam. Now it's time to fill this thing, and I just want to show you how tight that this, this lid fits in and out of here, but it just fits in and out of here. For filling, I'm using EK Cryofuel Clear Concentrate and plain old distilled water. Time for the peel. And I failed to realize that there's protective film on the inside too. All right, folks, time for some glamour shots of this thing, even if it is a soft tube build. Then we'll discuss performance numbers and I'll actually discuss things like why I'm running a soft tube build. Let's go. That's the build there. And honestly, overall, I was pretty darn happy with building inside of this case. The worst thing in here is just reservoir mounting. There's nowhere to mount a reservoir other than on the fans at the bottom or the radiator at the side. And the mounting hardware that I had from Alpha Cool was just horrendous. So I really had to cobble something together and I'm not thrilled with it. It will work for probably ever, but it was not something I would do if I had the choice. I didn't really make a point about it during the build, but I put three Cougar fans in the bottom of this case. They're cheap, 
They flow a fair amount of air and they're pretty darn quiet for what they are. They're just ugly, ugly orange. So that's why I put that grill, white grill on top of them. I'll probably change those out eventually to something that looks a little better in this case. Now, as far as the Bisky water block is concerned, versus my EK block that I had on there before, this thing isn't cooling as well, but there's a thing we're gonna discuss in a moment that might be the reason for that. I wish the RGB wire came out somewhere else, but what are you gonna do? Overall, I'm pretty happy with it, especially for the price. I would recommend it. So find a link to that in the description down below. Now let's talk about performance numbers. Something I didn't realize going into this is that precision boost overdrive on an X470 board with a Zen Plus processor doesn't work. And from what I'm seeing, that just seems to be the case. X570 isn't backwards compatible with that functionality on Zen Plus. Why that is, I don't know why they would take that functionality away, but I'm not needing it either. The Asus X570 board that I have in here is definitely boosting far better than my X370 board was. I'm getting much more performance out of this processor than I was in the previous setup. Previously, when I was working in Adobe Premiere, which is my primary workflow situation, I would get like 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz boost clocks out of this thing. Maybe, maybe a four gigahertz once in a while. Now on the Asus motherboard, I'm getting more like 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz, even above that. I'm really impressed with that. I'm happy to see that happening now. That means I'm gonna get more life out of this processor and I can wait till there's a sale on 3900 or 3950X to upgrade later. There is a problem though. While I am boosting great, the ASUS motherboard, as so many people have said in so many other videos, it pushes way too much voltage. I'm seeing upwards of 1.5 volts while I'm working on this thing. And that is just too much for this Ryzen processor. And it also means that my temps are spiking up. Previously on my EK block setup with the X370 board, I would never get over say 51, maybe on a hot day, 55C. Now I'm hitting up to 70 or more while I'm just running Cinebench. So I need to work on tuning in the voltage settings here. The only benchmark that I actually ran here was I did Cinebench before and after run. With the X370 board set up with the same 2700X and the EK water block, my temps were much more managed, but I scored this on Cinebench R20. Now with the new X570 board and that new Bisky block, my temps are up quite a bit, up to about 70C, but I'm scoring this with Cinebench. I've picked up like, I think 300 to 400 points in Cinebench right there. But that aside, I'm seeing much better boost clocks when I'm actually working in Adobe Premiere where I need it. I feel like my warp stabilization running and the analysis is working better. And it's amazing, I'm working on the same processor and only a few megahertz higher boost clock, but the thing is definitely working smoother than I was before. I'm quite happy with the upgrade that I've made here as far as performance improvement is concerned. That motherboard change reinvigorated this processor to be a better processor with only changing out the motherboard. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, folks. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this build, these parts, this case? What are you thinking? Do you have a better way of mounting a reservoir? Please tell me you do. Let me know in the comments down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with the water cooling hardware builds and whatever else I put on this channel. I will have some more water cooling builds in 2020, just not 100% when. So get subscribed to see when those come around. Thanks for coming around, folks.